how do you treat shock? The more important question is what is shock? Because once you can tell what shock is, then you can work out whether you're in it or not. Google defines shock as a sudden upsetting or surprising event or experience. Oh, wait, that's the other kind of shock. Shock is not when you hear bad news and you collapse. That is just when you get bad news and collapse or when you just collapse because of bad news, whichever way around it is. The kind of shock that I assume you're asking for is how do you treat shock is the kind of medical shock. So it is defined as hypoperfusion. So pretty much what that means is that there isn't enough oxygen getting to the parts of the body that need oxygen. And so then you have problems. Typically this results in a low blood pressure, which results with not enough oxygen getting to your brain, which results in you falling over and having syncope or collapse. What we're going to talk about now is the kinds of shock and how you would diagnose them. And if you're a first aider or paramedic or wherever you're at, we will discuss what you can do about it. So the four kinds of shock. There is cardiogenic, there is obstructive, there's hypovolemic, and there's third spacing. So let's go through those. So cardiogenic shock, cardiogenic, so cardiac, so it's shock caused by the heart not functioning. So if you have heart failure, or your heart's going too slow, or you have a heart attack, or whatever the case is, it's when your heart is not beating sufficiently. What's gonna happen there is that if the heart isn't pumping the right amount of blood through your body, then you're obviously gonna go into, go into a state of shock. What's gonna happen is that your blood pressure will decrease, your level of consciousness will decrease, and you won't feel very well. Typically speaking, someone who is in shock has a very weak radial pulse, I have made a video about pulses, or they will be feeling very cold and clammy, sweaty. So someone who's having a heart attack will be pale, their skin will feel cold and they'll be sweating all over. Someone who goes into shock suddenly, that is pretty much the representation. Sometimes they vomit. If your blood pressure drops suddenly, you can vomit. Then you have obstructive shock. So if you've ever taken a hose pipe and you've bent it in half and you've made a huge kink, in the hose pipe, you see how the flow of blood through that hose pipe changes. That's a good example of obstructive shock. Or there's something in the way, something that is blocking obstructive. So a pulmonary embolism, so a clot in the lungs, this causes a decrease in blood flow through the lungs, which obviously decreases the amount of blood flow through the body. That would be a example, or a tension pneumothorax, which is a big word for your lung popping and so then there's a change in air pressure in between the cavities in of lung and then that puts pressure on the major vessels like the aorta and the vena cava which are bringing blood into the heart and that causes obstructive shock symptoms are the same as it sounds like hypovolemic low volume this can be due to losing blood this can be due to lots of sweating so if you're not drinking enough water and I'm sure there's many other reasons why you can have low blood volume. So what are we going to see? Similar thing. We're going to have someone who has a rapid pulse, which is the first part of shock. And then you're going to have a weak pulse. You're going to have a decrease of blood pressure. You're going to then have a decrease in consciousness and they're going to collapse and you're going to have shock. So shock pretty much results in very similar findings. Then you have third spacing. Third spacing is when the the container that has your blood gets bigger. So let's say you have, for instance, a one liter can of Coke or a one liter bottle of Coke and you're like, well, my can of Coke is full. But if you took that same one liter of Coke and you put it into a two liter Coke bottle, your bottle is now half empty. And so that is the same example of third spacing is that you have this massive dilation of all your vessels in your body. And what that does is it drops your blood pressure. Why does it drop your blood pressure? Well, because the volume that you have in your body didn't increase, but the, but the space or the area that the blood needed to occupy increased. And so you had a decrease in pressure because you had an increase in space that needed to be filled. That would be third spacing. Um, this can happen with like anaphylaxis. You have that massive dilation. This can happen with um, spinal injuries if you damage your spine in the wrong place your vessels can dilate, and those are your four types of shock. Generally speaking, shock goes through three phases. There is the compensating phase. That's when the body is trying to make everything work all right while it 
tries to compensate for what is happening. So generally you have an increase in heart rate, an increase in um, blood pressure, an increase in your respiration rate to try and compensate for the loss. So if your heart's not working properly, like cardiogenic shock, your heart will then work harder, your blood, your blood vessels will contract, you'll breathe faster to try and try and overcome the problem. If you can't overcome the problem, so you can't compensate forever, then you go into decompensation. So what that means is that the patient then goes from like a fast heart rate, fast breathing and a high blood pressure to a low blood pressure, a low heart rate and slow breathing. So you go from this doing much better to doing really badly. That will be uncompensated and then it's irreversible shock, which is then, well, I don't think I need to explain what that means. Those would be your three phases of shock. So how would you treat shock? Generally, you'll hear people say, well, if their blood pressure is low, you should raise their feet. Um, something like this and actually they have proven that that doesn't work. They have disproven that this increases your blood pressure. What it actually does is it for a short moment in time may increase your blood pressure but for a couple of seconds and then the blood pressure drops again and it actually has no prolonging effect. So that doesn't actually work. So as a first aider there's very little you can do for someone who's in shock. What's important is that you're able to tell if someone is or isn't in shock and to call for help. If you are a paramedic or a, a, a doctor or medically trained and you actually can do things, if you have cardiogenic shock, you can try to do something for the heart. If that's medication, adrenaline, uh, noradrenaline. If you're having hypovolemic shock, you could give a presser to make the vessel smaller. You can give volume, so you can put a, a IV line up. If you have third spacing, then you can give volume or you can give adrenaline to make that big space smaller. Uh, or you can have um, ob obstructive shock like a tension pneuma, which you could then decompress. So as a medical person, you can do a lot, but as a first aider, you really can't do much. The best thing you can do as a first aider is to be able to recognize what's happening and call for help quickly. So guys, hope this was helpful. Remember, if it was, please hit like and subscribe and feel free to leave some comments at the bottom. And thanks for your time. Bye for now.